The hardest game is the one you didn't know you had to cast. Guys, welcome back. This time, for the final time, to DPL. What the what is going on? I'm Mike Loris, going to be casting this best of one tiebreaker. LGD. Going up against Newbie, both with, uh, I believe, five wins and six... Uh, five wins, five draws, five wins, six draws, something like that. Uh, they both have the same score, so they're going to be fighting for uh, third and... They're going to be fighting to see who's third and who's fourth place. Uh, it only matters insofar as who they place in the best of three phase, so like, there's no like winner, loser bracket or anything like that, but just got to iron that one out. This is my ninth game on the day, and uh, I'm going to be honest, I am wiped, so yeah. It's going to be a little bit tough, but we'll get through it. Newbie. Going to open things up with the Magnus because they can, along with the Juggernaut. That is almost the dream opening from a couple of cores for newbies, so they are very happy with this. And LGD, go for Monkey King, fine. Venomancer, hmm. Uh, we haven't seen any Venomancer today or the previous days or pretty much ever, so uh, picking him up at all is already fairly bold. Picking him up, uh, second pick is. Even weirder, man. Now, I do think Venomancer is a hero that is playable, although uh, it kind of needs to be fourth or fifth pick, maybe third you can get away with if you really have a good plan. Second is a little, again, it's a little bold. And Newbie have a much more direct approach in this game. Just store right up the Juggernaut and turn him loose along those lines. So we haven't seen an Ogre today, but uh, you know, Bloodlust on the Juggernaut make him even more swole. Certainly can't hurt. Get those durable heroes. Uh, alternatively, get heroes that uh, are more more willing to go for uh, for pipes. Darkseer comes to mind. Uh, with all the roamers being banned out, getting a Rubik as the uh, third pick here for a newbie seems like it's no brainer. Uh, great combo versus the uh, with the Juggernaut, obviously. But on top of that, you get the rather underestimated ability of Nullfield. It's like the last thing that people think about when they uh, when they hear a Rubik. But, oh, thank you, Newbie. Thank you, Jeebus, for banning out the Naga Siren. Praise be to Newbie, guys. They know. They know what they don't want to play against. Even though, honestly, Juggernaut Mag can handle a Naga Siren. Uh, yeah, it is... I'm very thankful that <laughs> Newbie are going to ban that one out. Still, LGD can uh, pick an Alchemist, I guess, which may extend the game, but uh, Alchemists usually don't have a nearly similar effect to a Naga Siren, who usually, like, 9 times out of 10 they extend the game, as opposed to Alchemists, who sometimes just fall flat. So what do they want to do with this Venomancer? He's an okay hero in lane, but kind of easily gankable. And they do protect it quite well by banning out Ricky and the Earth Spirit. I don't know why Radiant side heroes aren't making their uh, entrance calls. I don't know what's going on with that. By the way, it's a Legion Commander for LGD. This is curious. Uh, it's not like there's anything to purge off of yet. Uh, there's not really that much damage to funnel into a duel with what they have. Legion Commander is just a reasonable hero, uh, pretty much in any given circumstance. He's going to be just, or I guess she's going to be just fine. But uh, with the Venomancer, I'm like, uh, when you pick up a Venomancer second, you kind of need to have some sort of reason. And Venomancer Legion is not exactly what I would call a combo. And Legion Commander is fine, but uh, yeah, we'll see what they, s we still don't know what they're going to do with this Venomancer. Kind of a mystery there. Hmm. Not really sure if I see it. I still like to just have him in lane, but uh, if newbie just get like a BKB hero, like a like a Shadow Fiend for the mid lane, which I mean it's a Shadow Fiend, it's not really gonna be all too weird now, is it? Then they could just uh, just roll with that. You do have to worry about Venomancer kind of running your lane, especially with a Monkey King. But uh, yeah, newbie just pick up a Rubik here, pick up a Shadow Fiend fourth. They should be pretty happy with that. I mean, they already have Mag Juggernaut gone, but what more can you ask? What did they have last time? It was an Ember Spirit last time. That's actually a pretty sick hero to have up against the Venomancer. Their shield will eventually get burned through, but uh, 
It takes a long time for that poison damage to take its way through the flame guard. They are taking their sweet time, though. Now, they don't have any support, so I think, again, the Rubik support is probably one of the easiest picks they can make right now. Probably deciding on how they're going to get on the board roam-wise. Ventral Spirit is not a bad hero to have. It's a magic missile into a spin. Can't say no to that. Provides you some uh, extra utility up against the Legion Commander duels. And also up against the Monkey King. We don't see it all the time, but if you do get the swap out on the MK, then... Well, his ultimate is going to be uh, cut short. Wow, Terror Blade for LG. Those are the three cores in the three lanes. Venno, Legion, Terra Blade in mid, top, and bottom, most likely at this point. Uh, someone like a Crystal Maiden seems pretty good for LG's last. They are looking to go in for a pretty heavy mid-game play. Venomancer is pretty decent in the late stages, but is usually pretty quickly dealt with. Terrorblade and Legion Commander both can get off to a very snowball-y start. Ooh, a Winter Wyvern. I actually really like this. I mean, they have AoE teamfight combos, so I mean that's kind of nice just within Newbie's own draft. Outside of that, though, you uh, use the Embrace on Legion Commander dual target or a Terrorblade focused target. And, well, they're obviously not going to do too much now, are they? Alternatively, you uh, you've just put your ultimate, put the curse on a Terror Blade, and have Legion Commander go to town, or vice versa. A very, very high potential hero, but, uh, you know, as far as stability is concerned, as far as consistency is concerned, Winter Wyvern, I would say, is more so on the lower end of that. Like, I mean, the, you can do the Embrace tactic very, very consistently, but uh, landing good Winter's Curses, kind of difficult. The CM is going to be banned out, and Newbie now just looking for their mid laner. Uh, I mean, they have the save already. OD is pretty incredible up against the Legion Commander's duel. But they would really like to have some AoE magic, if at all possible. Invoker? Seems pretty dece. Whoa, it's a sniper. That's not bad, actually. The amount of heroes that uh, can close the distance on sniper are, well, one. Now that the puck is picked up. Definitely not what I expected. It's a support Venomancer. You just slam pick, first pick Monkey King into second pick Venomancer. Supports? I don't know about that. I mean, Puck is going to be able to get on top of the Sniper, but the thing is, once you do that, you uh, don't really have that much game against the Sniper unless you just burst him down or have someone else very quickly come in afterwards. And the damage that LGD have is in the Terrorblade Legion, and then uh, I mean, they will get Blink Dagger on Legion eventually. But again, these defensive tools from Newbie should be enough to keep this sniper at a pretty safe position in this game. Not sure what these LGD lanes are going to look like. Replace Venomancer with like a Rubik and or an Io. I'm completely on board with this, but uh, it is a little bit weird to see the Venomancer here. Five seconds remaining. The Newbie have just so much physical damage. And LGD, to their credit, do have Terrorblade. One of the better anti-physical damage heroes. But still, I mean, Newbie can cut through a Terror Blade like nobody's business. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Sniper at some point pick up a Maelstrom in his build. And cleave through the Illusions, so all the Metamorphosis damage in the world. And the Illusions won't last that long. You just kill yourself against the Illusions. I don't think I've seen that yet, but uh, it's possible. Winter Wyvern looks pretty fierce there. It's been a hell of a long time since I've seen the Winter Wyvern, guys. She is team's radars. Uh, I do think is very situationally playable, and in this situation is an all-star. So good on Newbie to recognize heroes when they're actually viable. It's going to be played by Kaka. U9 is going to be handling a Juggernaut towards top lane. Faith is going to be joining him as a support Venge. Over towards mid, SCCC. On the Sniper, down towards bottom, it's KP running back the Magnus. On the other end, LGD. Monkey King with no hat. That What is going on there? Who's going to be on the Monkey King? Tell me, game. 
It's going to be M99JY. Again, I'm not really sure who that is, but whatever, man. Yeah, I was going to be on the support. Venomancer got aim on the Terror Blade. Over on the mid lane, it's Puck. And uh, mid lane Puck, played by Maybe. And Old Eleven's on the solo off lane Legion Commander. Yeah, it's a very interesting way to go indeed. Legion Commander uh, going up against a Jug and a Venge and a Winter Wyvern is tough going. Uh, I mean, just the constant burn damage from this uh, Winter Wyvern is going to already do a lot of damage. I do believe you can buff it out, but only once. And you just keep on getting it reapplied afterwards. The Puck will have a uh, decent matchup against the Sniper. Base damage is in Puck's advan is in uh, Puck's favor, but Sniper has the projectile speed advantage over well everyone. Monkey King also able to make some rotations in. Because of course, if they are able to lock down this mag, which should be not too difficult, Venomancer is actually uh, a really good hero at poking and prodding, mostly because he can, at the drop of a hat, just throw down a Gale and then force a skewer, or the Magnus takes. Easily hundreds of damage. So yeah, you just keep on taking those shots, and then if you stick around too long, if you think, hey, I could I could take a couple more shots, yeah, you suddenly end up dead. And KP will respect that right now. We see Venomancer already primed up with the Gale. We can see already on the other end, old 11. He is uh, going to have that overwhelming Oz to CS, put a little bit of harassment back into Faith, but mm, Faith... He doesn't have a lot of damage up against the poor man's shield, but still, with Kaka here, can do a sizable chunk. They'll force the Legion off to the east side, and that's definitely not where you want to be as a Legion. It's so hard to get back to the lane. All right, let's see how much damage this uh, this Arctic Burn does. Half. Now, after that Arctic Burn runs out, it's a super long cooldown, and Winter Wyvern uh, just right clicks is pretty trash. But easy, half HP, half mana out from old 11. He'll shrine up. In 30 seconds, Winter Wyvern can run it back. And perhaps next time with U9 spin, should be a pretty easy kill. If Legion really gets that bold. Sentries will deward this pull camp. And off to the bottom lane, KP, yeah. And Venomancer is uh, just that much of a threat. Kind of unlike Warlock, who babysit-wise is... A much better hero at poking cannot offer as much kill power as a Venomancer. The difference is certainly there. Uh, this is something. A Gale from Invis from SC. Gonna connect. Orb is there as well. He's walled off. He's gonna get body blocked, if nothing else. He's gonna drop a whole bunch of shrapnel to try to kill off maybe. And he got him. Posthumous kill, but a kill nonetheless. Making the best out of a bad situation. Gonna get Sniper the uh, second kill of the game. Again, it's not ideal, but in that situation, there was actually no escape, so the fact that he got anything is kind of admirable. Yeah, he returned to the lane, and as long as there's no invis rune shenanigans again from Yao, should survive. Venomancer getting uh, closer to a couple more points in Gale, I would imagine. No huge incentive for Yao to just dump a whole bunch of points into the uh, Plague Wards. Not in this game, not now, so level of Poison Sting, get some more Gale, sit on SC a bit, who is in a lot of trouble, by the way, because, uh, well, the Monkey King can jump down. If the Gale lands, SC is screwed, and looks like it will land. He's going to drop a couple of stacks of shrapnel, but this time I don't think there's going to be a kill. KP does arrive, looking for Yao, but he'll need to land two consecutive Shockwaves. Gets juked a little bit. Shockwave number one lands. Catapult. Eh, catapult got him, wow. I've never seen a siege creep do that much damage. And Faith going to show up, but a little bit too late. It's, again, not a terribly great trade for newbie, but uh, LGD definitely don't expect to be making one-for-one -one trades for Sniper every single time. Still, it's going to be vastly in their favor to do so, but just uh, newbie limiting their losses. Interesting swap up, going to give Kaka the lane. Winter Wyvern with levels is a menace. Get points in Splinter Blast. Get, like, at least 1-1-1. Right now he has the 1-0-0 build at level 3. Not standard, but uh, Splinter Blast. Get that defensive power in the Cold Embrace if needed. Probably can wait a little while longer. 
uh, to level 5 at least, where you get that point. But a fast level 6 on Winter Wyvern, at the very minimum, just as another disable. Cancel a TP or stop a puck from jaunting to an orb. It's not the best disable in the world, obviously, but uh, it can get the job done. He's getting a free lane. Like, like KP is happily in the jungle. In power, not being maxed out. He has Iron Talon. His clear speed is pretty reasonable. It's going to be a much slower lane for a uh, slower game for KP compared to the last where he was pretty much trading evenly in the off lane with the enemy Weaver. But Magnus is actually a pretty reasonable jungler. Let's see what this Venomancer got. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Okay, that's a that's a good start, I think. Nothing really too too critical I can say about that. What I can say though is that Puck is level five and Sniper is only level three. And Puck doesn't even need a huge level advantage to take care of a sniper. All it needs is a coil. And SC, the amount of damage he does, yeah, can be pretty substantial, but once you're stuck in the coil, once you take the entire Puck's spell barrage, what? You're gonna have like two hundred health left. You can't do much about that. U9 old eleven. Start manhandling each other, but Cheater Old Eleven brings in help. Monkey King. Only level two right now. And naturally just doesn't have a granat. Actually abandoned this bottom lane completely. Where's this Terra Blade? He's jungling himself with an iron talon. Wow. I don't really know if I uh if I'm down with this decision. Iron Talon is not that expensive. But it is still an item that Terra Blade doesn't really need. He doesn't get any value from tree cutting, like not up against a Nature's Prophet. Monkey King is on his own team. Obviously it helps him jungle, but uh, you're really struggling that much in lane. Do you really have to jungle as a Terra Blade? Do you really need that extra damage when you could just have Illusions tank for you? I'm not really sure about that. I mean, what's done is done. He's going to give a free lane, though, to the Magnus. Kind of expensive just to have another source of income. Giving the farm to the Venomancer is quite nice. And with this farm, he's able to get more points in Plague Ward. Uh, usually you don't want to, as like a pure support, very low level Venomancer, go for Plague Ward. Because until it's maxed out, it's not really super useful uh, as a damaging tool. Versus structures or otherwise. So you would rather get Gale to kill heroes. But uh, if you're actually relying on a whole lane of experience, uh, why not go for the Plague Ward? Can get level five pretty quickly. It's a one-one-three build at uh, seven eight minutes. That's a pretty good rate actually. U nine has a spin for old eleven. Splinter blast lands, but there's a puck right around the corner. I don't know if newbie know about this, but they do have Kaka with an embrace. So we'll buy them some valuable time up against the pure, or you know, vast majority right-click hero of this Legion commander. Physical damage, be damned. Let's see, Winter Wyvern 5, Juggernaut 5, Faith 3. <laughs> Awkward. SC's kind of struggling in his CS. Dying twice will do that for you. It's right on the bottom of all the cores. Uh, really scared about closing in as well. With Winter Wyvern and Venge, there's not many heroes that can help him out here. Again, there's no Monkey King equivalent on the newbie side. No Ogre, no Treant. Ricky was banned, Earth Spirit was banned. Uh, he's going to get some help from Kaka, I suppose, but... Monkey King in the area. Probably can't make a play here towards SC. Cold Embrace, that immunity versus Monkey King is pretty backbreaking. They're going to find a Terra Blade. He is with a fresh Metamorphosis, though, and Kaka's just going to go to work. We'll Embrace himself, and they'll assassinate the Terra Blade. Kablamo, level 8, no Sunder. It's a standard build for the Terra Blade, but did not expect to be converged upon that quickly. Again, this is giving a lot of advantage towards Yao, and I don't mind that at all, coming out from LGD, but, uh, I mean, yeah, you can farm here, but what's wrong with farming here? Does anyone know? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm down with farming here. Unine's dead, by the way. No Winter Wyvern to bail him out with that Cold Embrace. Terrorblade kind of asking for trouble by going that deep into the enemy jungle to farm when he has creeps on his own side of the map. I mean... Why not, man? Why just why not just get your own creeps? I jump on towards top lane. Expenditure of a coil is going to get Legion Commander a dual victory. My bad for missing that, guys. 
Your nine's gonna return with an Omni Slash at the ready. And a Magnus behind him. For maybe some portion of time. This is leaving bottom lane unattended. Is uh quote unquote support. But at the same time, he is a Venomancer who's level six, pushing seven. Not with the most mana regen in the world, but I mean he can actually get to the brood mother levels of cancer on this bottom lane. You gotta start chemo immediately. Once he gets that level 7 Plague Wards, like, someone always has to be on this bottom lane. It's gonna constantly push the wave, so whoever is here is gonna get a lot of experience. That's why we see the Eventual Spirit rotating in. Wants that experience the most out of Newbie. But the Eventual Spirit can't really hold a tower. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Faith is gonna get a lot of experience, but yeah, I was gonna get a lot of gold. And keep one hero tied up. That's one support, one stun. That's not elsewhere. Avenge level 5, <laughs> just level 3 like a minute ago, quite nice, and now TP coming in, oh bottom lane, SC, jumped on and killed, double damage Terra Blade, that's the nightmare fuel right there, plus 194, are you kidding me, yeah, that's so disgusting, that's where Winter Wyvern's supposed to come in, but uh, little too little, little too late. Yeah, I'll still be farming. Puck got a 10 minute Midas. Not bad at all. Going for two nulls into Midas. This two nulls is going to slow down Midas by quite a bit, but uh, right now it's actually with quite a bit of value. Plus the threat of coil in another 30 seconds. More TPs coming in. Looks like they want to use this Omni Slash. And it looks like they want to use it on Yao. He has no Nova. He has no backup. Most likely, they're not going to commit anything to uh, saving Yao, but I would say they don't need the Omni Slash. They don't even need the spin. They got him. But Kaka's taking a lot of poison damage. Not really a huge deal here. He has Embrace. He has a Healing Ward. Never mind. Healing Ward dead. But they will lose a tower while this is happening. Kind of an expensive exchange. LGD, this Terra Blade. I mean, if you're planning on jungling this much, the Iron Talent is definitely worth it. Kind of weird to see though. Terra Blade can do it. We haven't seen this kind of uh, lane switcheroo very consistently from the Chinese scene. Like, sometimes they'll do it if there is someone like a Venomancer or someone who could really take control of the lane. Most of the time it is going to be a Venomancer. But not recently. They're going to jump in towards Kaka. Curse up onto the Venomancer is going to slow him down as well as Old Eleven, but Kaka is still just straight dead. And SC, he arrives, but. It's a little bit too late to do much of anything here. Has an assassinate, will almost kill off Yao. Not quite. Faith, what you doing there? Messing with the creep wave. Another kill for LGD. Slowly but surely, pulling ahead. Terrorblade on top of the net worth chart. I mean, that's not too weird, but uh, maybe it's a little bit weirder if I say the jungler is on top of the net worth chart. That's a little bit crazier. Not too insane, obviously. We see Enigma's uh, pretty frequently there. Towards top, though, Coil onto SC. You silence up the Winter Wyvern as well, but no follow up. So the Coil will be kind of just thrown away. They do have an angle on Faith. Jump in. Where's the stick? There it is. And reflection. And my god, Terra Blade's damage is real. He has a Dragon Lance and Power Treads. <laughs> and a Yasha halfway done. So, yeah. Aim is going to kick your ass. Ooh, 9 is going to run to old 11. I'm expecting the Omni Slash, but I don't think an Omni Slash can kill a Legion. I don't even think a level 2 Omni Slash can kill a Legion. This scaling from Newbie is going to require Magnus to land some sick RPs. He's gonna give U9 that extra juice. This is what they did earlier to get their win. But Juggernaut really doesn't have that same uh, Magnus synergy as a Sven. It's a little bit of a uh, not as bursty engagement, not as all in into the RP. 
And at this point, newbie kind of want to be all in. They want to be uh, able to put all their hopes and dreams on one RP and then just crit him down. I mean, the Juggernaut can definitely do that, but uh, requires some farm, requires some luck. Doesn't need to just press a God Strength button. Faith will wave to see the Monkey King. He'll jump down, though. And, uh, you know, Ice Frog thinks this is balanced. Monkey King's long gone. Faith is way too far in. Magic Missile. Blink out before it can be cast. There are a lot of heroes here for newbie. You know that old Levin's in the area. More heroes may be coming in for LGD. And newbie are looking to ambush them on the incoming. U9 has an Omni Slash with your name on it, Yao. There's a creep wave coming in soon. Not soon enough. And it will be a very easy Venomancer kill. Venomancer has a good amount of net worth, so it's technically just a support, but U9 is going to get quite a bit from it. Now dueled up, though. The punish is real. The dual win is there. 20 damage now total for the Legion Commander, while top lane is being pushed by the Terror Blade. Monkey King jumps in towards SC. Boundless Strike was already used. Old Eleven doesn't really want to walk through all that metal. But, oh, Skewer. Get wrecked, Monkey King. You can only pull that shit for so long before the enemy team starts uh, deforesting. Again, in the meantime, though, well, things are dying on bottom lane, actually. Got faith in the coil after the Winter Wyvern. Top lane at the same time. Aim is demolishing structures. Tier 2 for free split push by the Terror Blade. LGD are working with just the skeleton crew on the bottom lane and skeleton crew top, but winning on both sides. Newbie are just uh, a little bit uh, discombobulated right now. Old Levin and Yao, they have a lot of kill power together. Hand of Midas now on the Venomancer. Now, as I was saying before, like, I'm not a huge fan of this uh, Hand of Midas craze, but on Venomancer, on a support Venomancer, I'm all for it, man. You need that gold from a support standpoint. I don't think you can expect to keep getting lanes of experience and gold. So, getting toward Blink. Veil is pretty good for the team. For the puck, at least. Some high potential there from a Venomancer with a Hand of Midas. Especially since it's still only 16 minutes in. It's a pretty fast timing for support. 10k net worth for Terra Blade. He does not have an Empower behind him. He just has his own two blades, and he is leading the Juggernaut easily. Clean 3k lead there. He's going to turn that advantage into a Manta style very, very soon, as soon as he uh, gets to the shop. Old Eleven in the meantime, smoked up. Looking for someone to show themselves, and hey look, it's a free kill. That's not a support, that's not a Winter Wyvern, that's a free kill, that's all it is. 34 for the Legion. Newbie, looking to try to do something similar. You know, they may end up killing this Venomancer, that's fine. But, I mean, that trade, still really good for LGD. Despite the fact that Venomancer is worth more, the damage on Legion Commander is uh, probably worth the difference in gold. And I don't think they're even going to get Yao. They didn't scan. Do they have a scan? Oh, they don't have a scan. Well, maybe that's why they didn't scan. Yao is still deploying uh, Plague Wards. So they know that he is still there. They don't have a great way of seeing into the trees, though. Wave is pretty good, but you need to get pretty close. And uh, if you get too close to Wave, you may just get jumped on by one too many heroes. Oh, KP. What up, Magnus? What up? Are you ready to do 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 duel? Oh, he's going to skewer away. But the duel's still going to land. Did the Nova miss? Uh, I'm not sure if the Nova missed, but uh, he's he's dead. A kill's a kill. 48 for the Legion. And Magnus, I guess, forgetting that there's a Monkey King on the field. Like, usually that deep in the trees, you're fine, but uh, not against Monkey King. That's not the case. Shadow Blade for the Juggernaut. That's a little bit desperate. And the damage he'll be able to put out is quite substantial. 
FSC, he's let this Maelstrom is able to stay away from enemies, then he'll be able to do some serious DPS as well, but it just doesn't seem like it's uh, going to hold a candle to what AIM's putting out here. I have Scotty next. He went for a Blink Dagger. He is supremely confident. I mean, Blink Dagger on Terrorblade is, is not exactly a thing. Replace the Iron Talon with it. Blinking in just to the side of a fight allows you that luxury of positioning, which means that most likely you're not going to get hit by a curse and uh, end up getting killed by your allies or, you know, killing your allies as a terror blade. That's probably more likely. You'll just stay out on the edges until the uh, the big spell is used, the Winter Wyvern ult and the Magnus ult. Then after that, he'll jump to the side and go in. Speaking of going in, jump in from the puck into the back lines. Wukong's man goes down, duel onto the sniper, and he does not have a front line. He is down. Kaka is going to float away. Gets a curse onto one. That's the Venomancer down, but the Venomancer doesn't really have much to contribute here. KP's gonna land an RP in the back line, and it will be the puck to survive, though. He's playing some Rat Dota. U9's gonna teleport out of there, maybe cannot interrupt any of these TPs, but there is a problem top lane. Raxes are taken. The cleave is actually going to cleave through all of those illusions very quickly. The Sunder onto Faith. Aim should get a kill here, and he will. Though he will give up his life. That's Raxes. That's 20 minute Raxes. And I'm not sure if that was the plan from LGD all along. It probably was, but Newbie definitely did not see that one coming. And that fight was relatively even. It is a 4 for 3 trade. That is a dual win, I think. Yeah, 62. A dual win for the Legion Commander killing off the Sniper. But the Rax lead, the Rax lead is easily thousands of gold in their favor. Not to mention the map control, which I don't even think can be quantified. That is an absolute huge trade. Maybe this Blink Dagger is just for split push. Like we see Blink Dagger on Nature's Profit sometimes. Maybe he's just planning on doing that. Uh, it is a little bit awkward. Like, you have a Venomancer, usually that... Uh, Gonna kind of be his role, just slow push the other lanes. But Venomancer, as long as he's able to land a Poison Nova, that will force Newbie to uh, well, kind of overcommit into that fight. A Poison Nova really doesn't matter if you're a support or a core. It's level 2. It's going to kick your ass. Especially since you have, well, seems like no pipes. A Glimmer Cape is actually decent. Faith? I think he caught a glimpse of the monkey. Definitely did. No missile, no swap. U9's gonna run straight in with a silver edge. Old 11 assassinated, but he will blink to dodge the skewer. Still there's an... Oh, no Omnislash actually for another three seconds. Bounding Strike will slow the jug down, and Old 11 will get back to safety and heal up. He's ready to reinitiate here. Bottom lane in the meantime, pushed by Puck. They're gonna go into this fight without a Puck. That's a really bad idea. Terrorblade just looking for that Eye of Scotty. He has, whoa, what is this? This is two points in Dagon and an ultimate orb. I really like these uh, kind of... I mean, Puck is just going to invest in just kind of wasting time. Even trades so that the Terrorblade can get away with anything you want. Oh, RP on the two! It's absolutely perfect. A clean double kill for U9. Old 11 gets caught by that on the side as well. I'm going to try to go for Roche on top of it. There is an Omni Slash. No RP, yeah, but there's a Winter's Curse and an Omni Slash. That is enough to win a fight. Blink in, coil. Onto two. Lots of damage onto Kaka. Boundless Strike is there. Just needs one more Tapperino. Uh, he's gonna slip away. They do dust up, and now Aim's gonna jump in reflection onto everyone, but gets immediately cursed up. No, that curse actually didn't quite do it. They're gonna kill off the Magnus afterwards. Aim cannot be stopped. He's gonna take a full Omni Slash. Does he have a Sunder? No, he already used it. U9 will get bowled over by the orb, and then it'll be the puck to fall last. Maybe he's going to stand on a pile of corpses, but the Puck is going to be the sole survivor in that slaughter of a fight. I don't know what happened, but it was sure as hell a bloodbath. I thought the curse went off. I'm not really sure what happened there. Maybe it just killed an illusion. Maybe it went off on an illusion and he killed it immediately. I don't know. 
Definitely a uh, cluster F in that engagement. Regardless, big winner there. Terrorblade lived for a long time as well, so uh, he got a lot of cash off of that fight. And newbie just unable to keep their positioning consistent. I mean, that's that's the whole point of Sniper. You gotta just stay in the back. If you're not in the back, you're probably failing. And he has been just picked off so many times. Now we're down by an illusion. <laughs> A random puck illusion. How often do you have to see that? Keep in mind that fight started with a uh, two-man kill on Legion and Venomancer. <laughs> Two of the more deadly LGD heroes. They'll go right into the Roche Pit. In the meantime, they see Faith in U9 trying to deal with Plague Wards and Illusions and regular sentries. Oh my. But AIM has a double life. Now, I really like this Blink Dagger on Terrorblade, actually, for split pushing purposes, for pressure onto the sniper purposes. Like, he has a lot of range, in theory. Up against a Blink Dagger on Terrorblade, Puck, and a Legion. Keeping that distance is real tough. Monkey King pretty much has a Blink Dagger as well. This will do nicely. <laughs> Monkey King things. Actually looks pretty real there. I wasn't following the Monkey King, if I just took a look at this, I wouldn't think anything of it. Until the tree started to move. That would be a little bit weird. They have their eyes set on bottom. Newbie are going to go for a little bit of a push here. Fortification is there. They won't use it. Could have bought a couple more seconds. KP, he is going to have a chance to kill off Monkey King, skewer to destroy the trees, and drag him to danger. Mid lane in the meantime, aim is going to get cursed up. TPs are coming in, there's no help for this Terror Blade. He's in a lot, a lot of trouble. He will get broken, he'll lose his Aegis. But he has a Blink Dagger. I don't think he can blink out through the Shrapnel, no. He is super dead. Omni Slash Assassinate, yeah, rip Terror Blade. Split Push Terror Blade only works if you have Space Creators elsewhere. And oh, Puck, looking for the jump in, will almost get an RP out of KP, cancels it once. A lot of damage to the Winter Wyvern, the healing ward though, keeping him alive. Terrorblade down is going to be a tough fight, but Monkey King's ultimate, the jump in dual surprise from old 11, certainly work. Uh, maybe not on U9, they're going to try it on U9 immediately, the Cold Embrace is there. The Poison Nova goes off onto KP as well as the Juggernaut, but there's no damage going into him further. They lose old 11, they really need a Terror Blade for this fight. And maybe off to the side, has a Dagon still, but no one's snipeable right now. And SC will deny his buddy. A newbie, they uh, don't really have to work too hard for that win, honestly. That was LGD walking into a suicidal position. Like, as powerful as Legion Commander is, Embrace, man. That's like 50% of the reason why Newbie chose this hero, is to cast that Embrace. So, Winter Wyvern finally does the job she was hired to do. And honestly, like, they lost the tower before they even started that fight. So what is there even to fight about? <laughs> they just really wanted to get a surprise kill. But it didn't quite work. Now that name is back up, they have a pretty good shot at taking those fights. You just need that sustained damage from the Terror Blade. Now, Legion Commander can kill one guy, but killing multiples as Legion is tough. It's hard to stick to your targets. Assassinate. Coming in. Shrapnel. Just spot out against any monkeys once again. Oh, this time with the coil to cover, though. Can they kill off the... Well, they kill off the sniper, actually. The puck does. Old 11 going to take a lot of damage here. Where is the Terror Blade? He's coming in from the side. Can't blink. Doesn't really want to go into U9 either, so AIM's going to be driven away. Helps a monk from Monkey King might come in. Omni Slash is there. Going into a lot of illusions, though. Sunder from the Terror Blade is available. He'll do it onto U9. Gets hit with the Winter's Curse, which will slow him down a little bit. U9, though, still not too healthy. A couple more right clicks are all they need. He will go into the Embrace. 
But I'm not sure if that's going to get him out of here because there's still a Terrorblade Illusion. There's still a Gallant Akaka. And he's in a lot of trouble as well. Where are you going? Definitely min movement speed there. Aim survives off of that Sunder. Get a, gets three kills. Yeah, the Legion doesn't exactly gain a hell of a lot there. But you know what? Someone has to start the fights. Throwing the Legion in so that the Puck can kill off the Sniper. Let's just say that that was the initiation. Puck jumped in, killed off the Sniper. Level 3, Dagon. And Sniper is uh, able to put out a lot of damage. If you get away from the Puck, that is. Spell Amp is already up on the level 23. Oh my god, Puck. He's level 23. Holy crap, that's insane. And because his top lane was taken, Shrine now gone. Newbie are, uh... You know, they took a good fight because of LGD's kind of foolishness over in mid. With the addition of the Terror Blade, things get a lot different. Turns out having a uh, 17k hero in the fight is, uh, is usually pretty good. Venomancer though. Level 17. He's actually uh, not going to go for this uh, Poison Nova based build. I mean, it's soft countered by a Juggernaut Healing Ward and the Venom and the uh, Winter Wyvern Embrace. Okay, there we go. Did he just buy a whole bunch of stuff? No, he didn't. So now he's going to get the Blink Dagger. Now, I was going to make a huge point about that, but <laughs> he had something else in his quick buy, so. Don't have to make it right now. Blink Dagger into Ags, Veil. Vale. It's all good, man. Silver Edge on U9 is going to find an Omni Slash Allegiant Commander. There, it's being split by two heroes. U9 will get the kill and will back off. Kaka just in the area, just in case. All this damage in Legion Commander still having a kind of rough time in these engagements. <laughs> Always getting picked off first thing. Feels bad, man. I mean, you have 76 damage 31 minutes in. You still have a lot more than most Legion Commanders at that time. Oh. Yeah, so even if Legion Commander, like, doesn't get any more items in this game, he has the gold she already has, the damage she has, it's going to carry her through a, a lot more in this game. Don't mind this tree. She's getting a courier delivery. Yao turned to Hanamitis early on into a solar crest so far. Blink dagger very soon as well. Newbie still getting some pretty sick farm on U9. A couple of kills here and there. Basher is up, going for evasion next. U9 is going to be very powerful. Level 23 on him is pretty darn high. This sniper is the concern, though. Uh, concern for newbie. Like, he is working with a good amount of farm as well. Not juggernaut levels, not puck levels, but... He can accelerate with this Mjolnir buildup. He has damage up the wazoo. He just can't survive in these engagements. U9 is going to find Olev once again. Immediately the silence is there. Duel this time onto the Juggernaut. He's going to get hit with the Embrace once again, though. They can't insta-give him. They will, however, go for Kaka. That means there's no Winter's Curse for this engagement. The Omni Slash is going to go off towards Olev. It'll bounce towards the Creep Wave. Get Olev a little bit more space to disengage off to the side. There's an RP onto two, but there's no damage going into it. SC actually is going to do some damage now. Aim is with Sunder right now. He needs to cast it onto this Juggernaut. Will do a lot of damage, but can't quite kill him. 13 HP on U9, all calculated SC, will drop very low as well, will die to the poison sting of all things, but ultimately it's two heroes alive on each side, as the sniper was able to get to the back-ish of that fight. Cannot believe U9 survived all that, that's the Winter Wyvern's job right there. It's also the Terror Blade running into a lot of slows. Trying to wade through shrapnel is not fun. Magnus RP also doing an incredible job there from KP. As long as you land that RP on the uh, Terror Blade, you should be pretty happy. And he did. And all these mobility items, you better expect it to land.
ultimately a fairly even fight there, but yeah, newbies should still be very happy with how that went. Especially considering the start. Smoke running into smoke. LGD. Getting the dual initiation, but uh, dual is pretty easily hard countered by Winter Wyvern. It's very kind of like a Batrider, Vengeful Spirit type of situation. If Legion Commander just duels Winter Wyvern, then Winter Wyvern is so many layers of screwed, but you just can't find him. Winter Wyvern's always in the back and has the Blink Dagger, so can be even further back. Plate Mail is up on the Legion. She's really starting to bulk up. Physical resistance is a big deal for LGD versus a Jug and a Sniper with Empower. Yeah, armor already up on the Terror Blade. 36. It's an okay mount. An extra AC on top of that. And now a, uh, well, essentially armor from the Freezing Aura. Slowing down the Sniper, slowing down the Jug. They still have incredible attack speed, but slightly, slightly slower. Probably not going to make much of a difference. But it is still survivability for the puck, for the team. Similar auras aren't really here on on the newbie side. Like, Sniper is just greeting out right now. Ventral has a Solar Crest. Quite nice when you're dealing with a uh, Sniper and Jug and your own team. Gotta focus fire that one guy. Looks like both teams want to play the Roche waiting game. Both sides have... A lot of power in the Roche Pit, though. I mean, looking at you, Venomancer, Monkey King, Ultimate, Puck. It's all dangerous. I mean, RP, Winter's Curse, the Wave and the Ventral Spirit, and the Omni Slash. So much to deal with. Uh, if any team is going to Roche, it's either going to be super, super sneaky, or a team is going to have to make a big mistake. Or both. I mean, I guess if you're sneaky enough, you can force a mistake, right? That counts. Terrorblade pressure towards bottom. Racks are still being pushed up towards top. Keep that in mind. Melee was taken earlier. They're actually handling it pretty well, newbie, but this element of surprise might catch him off guard. Terrorblade illusion. No big deal. Nothing out of the ordinary. That hand of Midas a little bit out of the ordinary. I don't know if they saw it. Sometimes you're just not watching. Oh, Kaka, if he gets dueled, that could be really bad. They're going to jump in. BKB on 11, but can't find a dual target. Unai's going to drop a lot of damage thanks to the Blade Man, but 11 will get Omni Slash to death. Aim is in the back. He's going to kill off the Sniper, and now he's going to look towards Faith, but the Bashes, he can't Sunder. That is so bad here for LGD. They do deploy Wukong's command. He's going to try to do what he can, but with only him and the Puck, up against the Jug, I don't think there's any hope here. They got to turn tail and run, but Unai is pretty darn fast. Puck. Thinking about blinking towards the north, perhaps, is going to Shiva's guard. Still invis on this jug. The puck does see him with the gem. And is going to get, oh, almost hit. Dragon Blast. Mind game stage. U9 versus maybe. The gem on the floor. Courier grabs it. Another Dagon soon up. Juggernaut probably doesn't want to risk this. Maybe. Wants to play to his strength, which is elusivity, if that's a word. Ultimately, one hero alive on either side. Puck and the Jug. Once again, Puck just standing on a pile of his allies, but uh, Terrorblade got dealt an unlucky bash there. Unable to Sunder. A sunder on Juggernaut could have definitely swung things in favor of LGD. But this Terrorblade, this Legion, they're having a lot of issues in these fights. And Legion did absolutely nothing but tank an Omni Slash in that engagement. I mean, someone has to, but uh, you would rather it be a Venomancer or Terrorblade Illusions. Not your Legion before she can do anything. You know, this is exactly the type of game you want for a tiebreaker match. One that is extremely even. 10k for LGD, really. That's more like in the XP. I feel like Nubia are definitely not as far behind as the metrics would indicate. U9 is going to go to town on Roche. LGD are right around the corner. Shiva's guard blink in. Uh, Aegis Steel. Not going to happen. U9 gets the double life. 
And now fighting outside the base for LGD. That is a bad idea. U9 is stacked out of his mind. He has a uh, Moon Shard to pick up. His level 2 travels to pick up. Uh, Aegis obviously is being replaced by, uh, or replacing the ring of Aquila, kind of weak. But uh, farming. He was struggling to get his farm up. He was like 3k behind the Terror Blade, but Terror Blade has slowed down considerably. And farm on the Jug will eventually translate into farm on the Sniper. Either that or the uh, LGD squad ignore the Jug, go for the Sniper, and then end up getting their asses kicked by a Juggernaut. Which is fine for newbie as well. They're happy with that situation if it arises. KP. Shadow Blade. He doesn't see anyone. It is nighttime. Now knows where old 11 is. And now it's daytime. So the vision is definitely in favor of newbie if they want to jump in. Puck is coming wide from the right. But U9 has his eyes on the prize. Rax score soon to be equalized. Illusion is going to be dealt with off in the backside. Nova goes off. It will be the Winter Wyvern first to fall. Coil also on a KP. Most likely RP. Not going to be great. Lands on an Illusion. That is not good. But it's still Newbie. Going to get cleaned up. LGD with the ambush from the back. Have Terrorblade at full HP. Omni Slash onto 11. Will not kill him. Will eventually get U9 killed off. I don't see him getting out of this. Needs a TP. But uh, he has an Aegis. He doesn't have a Blink Dagger. He is pretty screwed. Uh, Winter Wyvern's going to buy out, but I don't really know for what point and purpose. Juggernaut's actually surviving for a very long time thanks to that evasion, but I don't think he's going to get out of here again. That's just not happening. He does have a buyback. Everyone does on Newbie. Everyone here uh, who was alive already did. But for LGD, they lose a Venomancer only. That initiation, that surprise angle on Newbie caught them completely unawares. Ended up taking out a uh, Winter Wyvern before she gets anything off. Same thing for the Mag. Uh, threw his RP down the toilet. I mean, kind of desperation. Almost connected onto the proper Terror Blade, but... Connected onto an Illusion. Gotta stop that Illusion DPS. And now they're gonna go towards bottom. There is no Metamorphosis here. Also aim. Hit by the uh, Ventral Spirit Aura on the backswing. So it's doing a lot less damage for a little while at least. She's gonna be back soon, maybe. Looking to get out of there. Has the gotta go fast orb, actually. But it's still in a little bit of trouble. Mid tower was taken. Everyone else on LGD will back off. Hmm. That's not the gotta go fast orb. It looked really fast to me. That was weird. I've been up since 2. I think I'm allowed to uh, be tripping balls right now in my domain but puck's gonna be rolling in the dough uh, as if the puck even needs it dagon five travels two can be picked up how the refresher orb in the stash like moon shard on puck actually not that bad like 100 250 a pop is not huge for this point in the game but uh from a puck it's not bad apply that uh Physical right-click damage, baby. The puck is above the jug in farm. Uh, the Terror Blade really needs an MKB. Opted for a uh, Hurricane Pike. Has not many item slots to fill right now. You don't really want to get rid of any of this. Maybe the Blink? I mean, that Blink Dagger facilitated his position up here, which is otherwise like impossible to get as a Terror Blade without it. So maybe he'll just keep that blink around. But true hit is needed. Uh, maybe if you get... I mean, if you get Bloodthorn, he has Mate Style. It's not even that great. Regardless of that team fight. We'll find themselves in a position where if they win another team fight, if they get... Uh, how many buybacks were spent there? That is fantasy points. That's not what I want to see. Let's see, the Dire have Venge and Mag still with buyback. Everyone else forced to burn it. If anyone, Sniper, Jug, die, that's it. That's going to be, well, unless they take like a massive trade, but it is most likely going to be just a straight Rax at least for LGD. Probably Megas, which probably means the game. 
They just have to buy time right now, newbie. Send out illusions. Clear the creep wave. Be very safe in doing so. I'm not sure if this talent choice is correct. Puck just recently got level 25. It couldn't have been that far away. You don't have anything to spend your gold on. Except for, like, moon shards. Again, moon shards, plural. Uh, I mean, the orb isn't really that good. Speed distance, but... Gold is just at a certain point useless. I don't know. Weird things to pop up in this game. It's like, oh, well, I already have all the gold I want. I don't need the gold talent. How often do you get to see that? Terrorblade would like a gold talent. More for the stats. All stats, all damage. I mean, he's the damage dealer. Of course, he has to. 43 hundo with buyback, of course. How much extra? 1960 extra. Can't really get anything huge with that. Yeah, Moonshards and the Terrorblade travels. He still has a little bit of a ways to go. But he's almost topped out. Venomancer. The late game hero that can step up to the plate. He's going for an Ethereal Blade next, but I mean, he has a lot of slots still to fill. On the other end, Sniper. He's very far away from being six slotted. Is finally going to get some bulk, though. With this Reaver purchase, it's uh, kind of expensive. He doesn't have buyback for another three, but as soon as that three minutes is up, he does really want to have that buyback. He's just going to gun for this Satanic. Now, I'm not really sure if he's going to get a lot of lifesteal value off of this. and like I'm not really sure how often he's actually right-clicking things without having a hero in his face killing him. But a Reaver is a Reaver. right? You get some health off of that at the very worst. Ooh, sneaky, sneaky. Uh, the problem with this is that top lane is being pushed by Juggernaut, so I don't really know if they're going to find anyone here. They certainly have the element of surprise, but Terrorblade forced everyone to the bottom lane. Oh, uh, that is uh, awkward. Quick, hide in the trees! Yes, stay in the trees! Yeah, I'll get in there! Old 11 blink! Did the building see him? That's purple pinging. I don't know who that is pinging. Is that brown? I think that's Magnus. They're going to head up there. Kaka is going to walk over some detection, and they will jump on the Winter Wyvern first thing. Coil and the Balance Strike, they'll get the kill immediately. That means this duel is free and clear. Can they kill off the Jug? They will, I think, yes. The RP does land in the Legion Commander. She will go down straight afterwards, but there's no Juggernaut for this fight. And that means the Terror Blade is going to run around unchallenged. They'll zap down the Sniper. They, those are the two big heavy hitters from Newbie down, and that should be the game, as Faith is going to be chased down by AIM, still almost at full HP. Will secure... The Rax is first, but with no buyback on the Sniper, nor the Jug, they do not have a chance here. LGD will claim the win, will take 5th place, 4th uh, th place, 4th place, uh, LGD will take 3rd place, that's what they're fighting over. In a very, very close game, that fight over in mid, that kind of wraparound by the Terrorblade, Big, big deal there. Like, up on the cliffside, that's exactly where Terrorblade wants to be. LGD played pretty darn well. A couple of a couple of hiccups here and there from Old Eleven, but that start from Legion Commander, definitely giving uh, maybe an aim, the, the time and space necessary to get where they are to really finish the game. So even though Old Eleven kind of blundered uh, with his duels at some point, he already made his contribution. That's going to be... The end of the day for real this time, guys. I'm Mike Loris, nine games in a row. Whew, it is exhausting. But LGD will come away victorious here. And uh, starting tomorrow, it will be the uh, best of threes. So be sure to check in with that. I am not going to be covering that, so rip. But uh, if you guys did enjoy the casting, be sure to hit me up on Twitter, at Mike Loris, in the upper right-hand corner. DPL is closing soon, guys, so stick around for it. I will see you guys in another tournament.